All right, so I'm Luis from Aragon. Um, for the guys that don't know about what Aragon is and the people here that are curious to know, basically Aragon is a project to empower freedom uh, by creating decentralized governance. And decentralized governance, uh, you know, it can seem very abstract, but particularly you can think of decentralized organizations as a first step towards creating tools for decentralized governance. Um, so what we're doing right now is, you know, decentralized organizations can really solve a lot of problems, but uh, before getting there, we need to first kind of solve our own problems. And there are a lot of problems for crypto projects right now in terms of governance. Like basically everyone has governance on the roadmap and it's like that black box. And you know, it's a, it will work out, you know, governance is just like the keyword itself, uh, which sounds very powerful, but then we haven't really experimented so much with it. So what we're doing is we are, uh, we have this program called Aragon Labs, and basically what we're doing is we're taking these awesome projects here uh, and, and others and just kind of trying out small experiments with their governance and their communities. Uh, right now, we are still not doing anything in life because we just have like our testnet release like a month ago. But we want to try this out first with uh, these projects, these community-driven projects uh, that are here, these crypto projects. And then we can move on to other kind of users. And eventually we will reach the user that is like, you know, the 12-year-old kid in Venezuela who wants to interact with other people in the world. Um, so now it's demo time. Uh, I know doing demos is a very bad idea. Um, and I want to pray to the gods of Rinkeby, uh, the, PO, the, the POA validators, uh, the gods of uh, Infura and the gods of Midamask. Um, so hopefully everything works out. What we're going to do here is we're going to create a new organization, a, DA, a DAO. And so uh, this is the Aragon interface. We're going to do it in Rinkeby. So what you see here is two different templates. The idea is that people will be able to create different templates to code them. It's actually very easy. And these templates, what, what they do is uh, they set how apps inside the organization interact with each other. So you can create a democracy template, a multi-sig template, an NGO template. In the future, you could even like imagine like a Delaware template that automatically like set up like tax reporting for you and all of that. Or you can create just like a you know a crypto project template and just have like tokens that you can give out to your uh, community for them to vote on things. So right now we are going to go with democracy because people like democracy. Um, and so we are going to uh, give, it, give it a name, then like Edcon, whatever. You can actually, if you go to app.aragon.1 um, and type like the, the name of the organization there, uh, you can basically like interact with it. So we're going to move forward and configure this, da this DAO. So this is a democracy, so it has like different parameters regarding the voting, like uh, how, how much that the, does the vote last, how much quorum does it need to pass, so we're going to configure those parameters uh, with like, I don't know, 10, 10, and one hour or something like that. Or whatever Jorge considers <laughs> good. And then we're going to create a token. And this token uh, is going to be a token which will let people vote on the organization. Uh, so it can be like the Edcon token. And then we're going to click Next. And we are going to pray to the MetaMask gods. And now to the Rinkity gods. <laughs> uh, <laughs> After this, if everything works out, um, we'll have a decentralized autonomous organization. Um, I want to convey that, you know, experimentation in DAOs was very stopped after the DAO hack. Uh, and it kind of took a long time for people to realize, okay, the DAO was just like a problem with, with software, but not with the concept of DAO themselves. Um, so basically what, what is happening here is we are deploying an entire DAO with apps included. You're going to see later, but there is a, a token manager app to create tokens, to assign tokens to different people. There is a voting app to create votes. Uh, it's a very simple democracy uh, application. And there is also a finance app, which lets you control the balances uh, and the tokens in your decentralized organization. And how this is configured, and we will see uh, if the gods of Ethereum uh, listen to our praise, we will see, yeah, it works. Uh, so we, what we will see um, is a basically, uh, with this template we have used, it's a very basic template. You will be able, if you are a token holder, you will be able to uh, open votes for things, uh, so, such as, for example, withdrawing funds from the DAO or stuff like that, or creating new tokens. And if the voting passes, we will see that um, the action executes. I think this is super powerful, like being able to create this kind of organizations in like 30 seconds or whatever time it was for us. Like literally doing these kind of things in the real world takes months or, you know, the best of cases, weeks 
or at least days, but in some places in the world, they cannot do it because the governments are corrupt and it's just months and months. Uh, in my case, like when I was 16, I wanted to create my first like company and in Spain, it was illegal. You have to be like, you have to spin around 18 times around the sun. So be like 18 uh, or older in order to create this. And I consider that censorship. So let's try this out and see if it works. It's, uh, it's one of the different apps, uh, which I hope the, uh, yeah, it worked. So this is a fully working, decentralized, autonomous organization. <laughs> We're gonna play with it a little bit. As I said, if you go to app.aragon.1 uh, and type Edcon, you will be able to see this organization and interact with it too. If you want some tokens to vote, you can tweet at our social channels, and afterwards we'll like airdrop some tokens to people here. Um, so we're gonna try to see the token manager. Like, you know, who has tokens right now? We're trying to sign tokens to someone. So right now we are the dictators of it. We are the only token holders, but we are gonna try to assign tokens to other address or our same address because we really like tokens, right? So we are, yeah, like nine tokens or whatever, and then we're gonna click assign tokens. And this is where the magic really kicks in. So there are two things happening here. The first one is when you interact with Ethereum, uh, we are familiar with like these huge X payloads uh, that are like super tricky to understand and no, no user really understands them. So they are just signing stuff uh, without really knowing what, what they are signing. So we have created uh, something called RATSpec, which is a safe alternative to Ethereum's NATSpec which basically lets you describe uh, Ethereum transactions in a smart contract in a way that is understandable for the user. So as you can see there, we're telling the user, if you do this, if you sign this payload, the action that is gonna be triggered is that we're gonna mint new tokens for that address there. Um, that's pretty user friendly, and also it's a security improvement over just signing whatever hex payload you have. Um, and we want to see the standard adopted by like other like providers and wallets and stuff like that because it's, I think it's very powerful. And then the second thing that is happening is if you have an organization, you may not have direct permission to do certain things. For example, you don't want your token holders to be withdrawing funds directly from your DAO. You want some governance process. And so here, what we are doing, we call it transaction pathing is we are saying, okay, you are a token holder in this DAO, you don't have permission to withdraw money directly, but you do have permission to open a voting in the voting app, and that voting app has permission to finally withdraw funds. So we're telling the user, hey, open a voting, and then your intent will be satisfied if the voting passes. And we, with this structure, we can create super complex governance models. This is just a simple example. So we're gonna send a transaction and pray again. Uh, as you guys have seen, it is uh, pretty user-friendly. Um, we have built our own UI toolkit, which at the moment uh, is like everything that you see here. Um, but what we want to do is we want to actually create a UI toolkit that is very usable for dApp developers. So something that has stuff like optimistic UI built in, um, and also like, as I said, these kind of very readable Ethereum transactions to see what you are really doing. So now we're gonna go to the voting app, uh, see if Ring can be likes us uh, and loves the voting here. Uh, so the idea with, with voting is that right now it's a very simple app, but you can have different governance mechanisms. You can swap it out for uh, a quadratic voting app or uh, for any other kind of voting or even not voting, but even like things like food or key or stuff like that. Um, so Ring Gods are not really liking us. So I guess we can, we can skip to, uh, to finance directly because I think it's a, it's a pretty cool app. Um, so finance is basically like the vault and the, of the organization where the funds are. So right now you can see uh, some test tokens there in the testnet. We can request tokens, uh, like an airdrop of test tokens. Um, basically, w I think finance is very important because we're seeing these uh, crypto projects and that you know have a lot of funds and these funds kind of were raised in the first place for the crypto network itself, not for the team behind it. So I think it's very important that we slowly transition to uh, this you know, communities having access over the funds. So this is the, uh, going back to voting, this is the voting, we can view it, we can vote. As you see, it's very user-friendly. You see what the voting is doing. We automatically voted when we created the proposal. Uh, it's really easy and it passed. So now we can see that we have nine more tokens in the token manager app. Going back to finance, 
Um, basically, th those are just test tokens. Don't really, don't really trust it. But I think it's very powerful for transparency. Like right now, the closest we have in our case is we have this website called transparency.aragon.one in which you can see how we are spending money. Um, but this is another level. This is actually because in transparency.aragon.one, it's just like a way of documenting how do we spend money for our multisig. But these, you can actually automate a lot of things. You can actually even uh, give token holders power to uh, start withdrawing and using funds um, in a very progressive way. Like you can say, okay, uh, you guys can withdraw up to one ether per month uh, using, you know, or, or you can do thresholds in, in general, right? Um, yeah, we have BCC, we have a lot of BCC. <laughs> very nice. And you can see here all the, uh, you know, all the left here, and you can also like transfer tokens. And if we transfer tokens, it will be the same thing as, as earlier. You will have to go through voting. And this is very powerful because you can set, as I said, thresholds. You can start saying to your community, okay, have access to win Ether per month, and then 10, and then 100, and try out new governance models for that. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, permissions in, in the App Center, but for doing that, I want to switch back to the slides. So, how we build this thing, right? Uh, basically, what we are what we are doing um, is we have this Aragon app, which is like the list of apps that you saw, and like uh, the notifications and the signer view, which shows you what you are signing. But then, developers, third-party developers, can create their own apps, uh, and they can do so by uh, creating, you know, uh, this UI using our toolkit or any other web toolkit, um, and also they can. Uh, have what we call background scripts, um, which are basically uh, scripts that execute in the background using a web worker. And what it does is it continuously fetches information about the, about, the, um, about the app and the state that it has on the blockchain. So when you want to access the app, it's actually like almost loaded in terms of like data uh, from the blockchain. Um, and also apart from that, we have, you can write your own smart contracts that go alongside the UI itself. So we have built a package manager, which itself is a DAO, and what it does is it allows you to publish new versions of both front-end and smart contracts of apps, and you can actually have any governance mechanism behind this package manager, because right now it's just like, you know, you have you create a release, whatever, that's a very a strong point of centralization. So what we are doing is we are trying to, you know, right now it's sort of centralized, like the package manager is controlled by us, but in the future it may be controlled by the community, and therefore you have some community veto on the versions you publish, which I think it's, uh, it's very important. So, no, next. Obviously this is a lot of things to build by ourselves, so we have a, a grants program, it's called Aragon Nest, that we are doing with, uh, with placeholder, and so we are announcing the first uh, batch of grantees pretty soon, and I'm super excited about that. Some examples, uh, a decentralized git repo controlled by a DAO, or what I'm going to show now, which is um, a way to sign transactions in your operating system that supports, uh, you know, soft software wallets, or even Ledger, or Trezor today. So this sits at your operating system, Mac, Linux, whatever, um, and it allows you to interact with Web3, no matter if you are accessing it from Electron or from a DAP or from a browser. Uh, so it's pretty cool and it's working uh, today. We want to make Aragon a movement. Um, right now it's pretty much centralized in the foundation, but what we are doing is we are splitting ourselves from the foundation. So the idea is that uh, people and more teams will be able to work on the core Aragon infrastructure because we can't build this ourselves. Like it's a huge stack, uh, so we're trying to stay small and have multiple teams with diverse views to work on the core Aragon protocol and the core community. So what we want to do finally is to experiment with governance at the speed of software because for the first time in history we can experiment past democracy or we can experiment past dictatorship. We can create new governance models that are much more powerful. So that's possible thanks to decentralized organizations. Finally, I want to invite everyone to check out our website and try out the alpha. Uh, we are going to the minute soon. So thanks a lot for everyone for being here.